In this episode, we'll be reviewing PWC Cadmium Yellow Deep. Sup, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of The Paint Show. Today, we'll be looking at PWC uh, Cadmium Yellow Deep. I got this one together with two other PWCs, the Cadmium Red Deep and the Cobalt Blue. Um, this trio has been working really well for me and I really enjoy it. Uh, I will put a link uh, in a card, I think somewhere here or here, uh, so that you can see the full review of the set as a set. Uh, but as I said, I really enjoyed this one so far. Um, today what I think we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the color info, uh, I'm going to uh, show you a few paintings I used it for, uh, and then we're going to do a quick demo and I'm going to show you exactly what this one looks like. Uh, it's one of my favorite types of yellows, uh, I guess, or oranges, uh, and I really, really like it so far. So let's get started and look at this paint's uh, info. So Cadmium Yellow Deep uh, by PWC, let me give you a better look at the actual tube itself. Um, I don't always do that uh, lately. So what we've got here is uh, pigment PY35. Uh, that pigment uh, I did want to compare because it's a cadmium. Uh, I wanted to compare it to uh, other brands such as Daniel Smith and Schmincke. And from what I found, uh, Schmincke also use PY35. Uh, they use it for their cadmium yellow um, light and medium. Uh, in their deep, they add uh, pigment orange 20, PO20. Uh, now I did check Daniel Smith and they don't seem to use uh, PW. Uh, PY sorry 35 they use PY 53 which makes sense I read somewhere that they don't uh, use cadmiums at all uh, they eliminated them just for safety um, and health concerns um, for their employees probably as well in the preparation process now again as long as you're careful and you don't touch the paint uh, and you just use it for its intended purpose it's okay uh, but cadmiums are more toxic and so um, they made a decision probably if I'm not mistaken if I am correct me in the in the comments but I did I did do think they made a decision um, to not use them and so it makes sense that Daniel Smith don't use this particular pigment now anyway uh, light fastness is three out of three that's the best uh, in terms of PWC ranking uh, it's semi opaque you can see this here as well okay uh, this could be a disadvantage for some who prefer more transparent paints. Um, I also start to move towards more transparent ones, so I will uh, need to think about this as well. Uh, it is non-granulating, the se Series D, so it's uh, a bit more of an expensive one. Uh, and staining is something that they don't mention, but I do want to uh, test out. So we were going to test this out as a part of the demo, okay, and we'll see. I honestly uh, am not sure. Uh, so anyway, let's get started with the demonstration. Take a look at this. And the moment before we start the demo, I just said I will show you. Uh, this is the result you can expect from using this one together with the other PWCs, uh, with the Cobalt Blue and with the Cadmium Red Deep. Uh, I'm really pleased with this. So you can see this yellow in many places here. Uh, in the roof, on the walls, I used it everywhere. Um, this, these are again some of the swatches. Uh, that I showed you the previous time. And this is the result of using them. So just to give you an idea. Uh, I think I also did this one with them as well, um, so you can get an idea of what it looks like and on different types of focuses for here. Uh, the focus is maybe more orange, here it's a bit more green and dull. Uh, so anyway, I hope this gives you a better idea of what this looks like. So I want to pour out some of the paint for you to see and I'll be using this as a mini palette. Um, so let me show you what this looks like, I hope it won't... Um, yeah, okay, so it didn't <laughs> leak out. Uh, so this is what it looks like here. Uh, let me show you on the paper. So I'm just gonna put a small amount right here. Like this, and we're gonna play around with it and see uh, how we like it. So what I want us to do is test out, just show you what it looks like, the swatch, then we're gonna lift some of that. We're gonna do wet and wet, dry, red mixes, and blue mixes, as always. So let's zoom in on this area. Okay, so let's see what this one looks like. So a very happy yellow. Uh, moves toward, it moves towards the warmer. It's not a bit orangey, I would say. Depends on what you, uh, what you, I guess, uh, look at next to it. So uh, it's really relative in many senses. Um, 
so if you will put this next to a uh, a more orangey yellow it will look a little stronger and a little more a little uh, weaker a little cooler uh, it really is relative in many senses uh, let's do some wet in wet now so I'm just gonna pre-wet the area and I really wanna see a few mixes later on of uh, different types of blues and reds uh, because I'm always curious with yellows I tend to not be able to guess the result uh, as well as with other paints uh, with blues and reds I can kind of expect to know what will happen uh, what paint will neutralize each other uh, what paints will neutralize each other uh, what will work well together and uh, with yellows I'm not that I don't know if it's something uh, specific but in any case uh, so this is what it will look like wet and wet okay and hopefully you can see the swell um, I will try and improve the video later on in the editing software. So we're going to let it uh, allow it some time to dry. And now we're going to do some dry brush, which is my favorite part sometimes. Uh, so I'm just going to dry out some of the paint here. Um, like this. I really enjoy this. Um, I am planning on making a tutorial on dry brush uh, and using the paint dry. Uh, I think it's a topic that I don't know, I didn't see it discussed that well uh, in terms of the actual technique uh, and I don't want to show more of it so I'm actually curious to see how that's going to be received um, because, you know, I, I take it for granted but it actually takes quite a lot of practice to get the effect you want with a dry brush um, sometimes you just aren't able to, you don't know how dry the brush should be so it's not that easy so I don't want to take anything for granted and it's something I do want to talk about uh, so next up we'll have the red mixes so for starters, I want us to try and mix this one with um, a kind of a quinacridone rose a red, a little cooler, I guess. Uh, so I'm just going to get some of that kind of red here and I'm going to let these two play around on paper. What I do find that happens many times with these kinds of mixes is that uh, you get a very beautiful gold result. It looks a bit... Uh, gold the color combination so yeah and I can also feel how you know the the quinacridone rose is a more transparent so uh, I can really feel how the yellow um, dominates the mixture in terms of uh, opaqueness it really uh, you can if you you have to really do this to feel it but you can sense how the yellow just is above the above the red uh, it's kind of like oils even it's very really interesting um, I've been thinking a lot about just the, the basic way I do things in watercolor. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in a future video, uh, but I really want to, and this is something I talked about in my podcast as well, challenge my artistic beliefs and uh, force myself to try out new things uh, in completely different ways. So more on that uh, later on. Uh, so in any case, now I want us to try and mix it with uh, a warmer red, so like a cadmium red or pyrrol scarlet or uh, any of these will do. So I'm just going to dig deep to get the pure pigment. And here we get it. So this is a very uh, orangey red. Okay, and hopefully you can see this well. I'm going to just get some of the yellow and let the two mix together. So the result is quite similar. For me, it's, it's really, again, it's hard to see the, the difference many times when I'm mixing uh, with yellows. It's just something maybe I'm not um, accustomed to enough. Or I'm, not, I'm just not... Uh, that well versed in uh, these kinds of mixes. Uh, so in any case, very similar. Uh, I think the next one will not give a similar result at all. So I'm going to try it out with a cool and a warm uh, blue. So first, or maybe you know what, I think it could be interesting to try and mix this with something like Thalo Green. You know what, let's try a Thalo Green mix. So I'm just going to grab some of the Thalo Green I've got here. And let's see, because it is still cool. Um, Thalo Blue is a, is a paint I use a lot for these kinds of experiments. So let's try green this time. So I like that a lot. I like the, the Thalo uh, mixes with yellows uh, are among my favorites. And, and this is something I had to discover really after a long... Uh, long uh, tries and, and really a long time of hating thalos uh, but now I really love them so this is kind of what you get with these two uh, let me try now with a, a warmer French ultramarine and we'll see this the only thing I don't like about the French ultramarine especially Daniel Smith's is that it just takes some time to re-wet 
uh, but it's still a beautiful color. And I'm much better than some of the other brands still. Uh, so anyway, here we have some of the blue. Let's just pick up some of the yellow. Let these two mix on paper. Uh, this is the one thing I can expect. Uh, I know that the warmer, the French ultramarine with these kinds of yellows tends to uh, create a very muted green. Um, so this is something to take into consideration. Uh, I think you really need to learn how to use uh, French ultramarine or ultramarine blue uh, in these kinds of scenarios. It's not always easy, I have to say. Uh, because it does tend to create a more muted green that's fine and even more realistic actually for, for foliage and trees, but you do need to learn uh, how to utilize it because sometimes it can create a lot of boring texture as well. Uh, so in any case, this is it. I love the combinations we got today. Uh, the one thing I want to do is lift. So we're going to let uh, the swatch here make sure it's dry enough and then we're going to lift it and then I'm going to show you the final result of everything. Okay, so I think this is dry enough for us to lift now. So what I'm going to do is um, I just put dipped my uh, brush in the water and I cleaned or dried some of the water out. Okay, so it's still damp. I'm going to clean a bit more. So it's still damp, but not as much. And I'm just going to try and slightly wet the area here and see if we can lift. Now I'm going to clean the brush dry it as thoroughly as possible because now I want it to be thirsty and pick up the paint and you can see it is uh, liftable to some degree. Now it could be due to the paper as well so we have to take that into consideration. This is cellulose paper uh, and not cotton but in any case you can see how I with no too much trouble can lift up the paint like so. Um, so it doesn't seem to be as staining maybe as other paints. I will uh, make an experiment. I maybe even update you on Instagram or somewhere else uh, about how this lifts on a 100% uh, cotton paper such as Saunders Waterford or Arsh uh, and we'll let you know about that. But in any case, let me zoom out and show you everything together. Um, so here are all of the results together. Just beautiful. I love the mixes we got today. Uh, I was able to lift some of that so it doesn't seem to be fully staining. Uh, we've got a nice wet and wet result, nice dry brush result here and lovely mixes. Uh, I do want to ask you which one of these mixes is your favorite. Uh, I think I can create a poll somewhere here. Um, so I will create a poll which of these mixes is your favorite. We've got the quinacridone rose, Pyro Scarlet, Thalo Green, and French Ultramarine. Uh, let me know uh, in the in the poll uh, which one is your favorite. Also, you can see here this is a beautiful, beautiful result. Uh, so in any case, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one and let us wrap up this video. This is it. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Paint Show. I think we're building a nice a stack of episodes and I've been really enjoying this show. Uh, I think what I want to do uh, in the near future is get a few more exotic paints and look at them because I've been working a lot with primary colors which is great. I love it. I've really been enjoying it but uh, I would like to show you some more interesting paints in this context. Um, what I do is for the most part show you uh, paints I'm interested in and I'm, that I'm working with. So you get a, a a very biased sample of paints but I do want to show you some more. Uh, I don't really go that crazy with the, the colors I'm using and I'm trying to keep it pretty solid and uh, I guess conservative in that sense but I do um, just in the sense of colors because I'm, I'm so focused by other, on other things and color just tends to overwhelm me and it's so easy to, to get lost in, by using a lot of colors. But hopefully I will start mastering more using um, uh, just a larger variety I guess of paints in one painting in one work. But in any case this is it. I really hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you still haven't. I have tons of other episodes like this one and many other tutorials and reviews and tons of fun stuff. Uh, I will put links to my podcast and to my Instagram page and to my everything else in the description box and also the information that we talked about regarding this paint will be there and also links to uh, purchase uh, sets of PWC on Amazon. This is it. Thank you so much. I will see you again in another episode and in another vid real soon.